What's up? My name is Simon. We have a lot to talk about today. We have Game 5 of the NBA Finals, a UFC 289 recap, and Amanda Nunez retiring and NBA rumors. Let's get started with Game 5. In Game 5 of the NBA Finals, I pretty much have what I've been predicting this whole entire series, Nuggets and 5. And all I'm hoping is just for a good game, and hopefully the Miami Heat can make it competitive with they've, what they have been doing pretty much this whole playoff series. And... I mean, Nikola Jokic, I think today wins his first of maybe many um, championships and his first Finals MVP. And I'm just, I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready for the offseason already. Um, what we're gonna see next with the Denver Nuggets with um, Bruce Brown probably possibly leaving. Hopefully, they can resign him and get that. And I mean, Aaron Gordon has been playing out of his mind with Michael Porter Jr. kind of struggling these past few games. I mean. That's what you get. You, I mean, it is what it is, but with Aaron Gordon stepping up, with KCP having his games, and of course Bruce Brown having his huge moments, and this just seems like a possible, I don't want to speak too early on this, but a possible next run slash dynasty of this Denver Nuggets because they are together for a long time. They have the coach. They have the superstar who looks like he is just, you know, he's he's not slowing down anytime soon. And, I mean, I hear have the Nuggets winning game five and hopefully the Miami Heat. I mean, the next questions for them is what they do next. How can they make this roster better with a lot of free agents where they have such as Gabe Vincent, Max Struess, and then you have, I think, believe next year, Caleb Martin next year. And that's a lot of, That's a lot to ask. That's a lot. Um, next question is what's asking. Even what you do with Tyler Hero, do you trade him for Dame? Does Portland even want Tyler Hero for Dame? Because I think they can get a lot more better packages than that. We'll talk about that later. But, man, the Miami Heat do have a lot of question marks for a team that's in the finals, such as, I mean, a lot of other teams have question marks, but this Miami Miami team seems like they can't get over that hump to win the championship. But, I mean, for them making it these past few years has been amazing. And that's why I said Nuggets in five. It looks like it's what it's going to be. Comment down below if you think the Nuggets are going to win. And let's get on with UFC 289. UFC 289, um, this card was really good, really, really entertaining. But I want to talk about the two main fights, the co-main and then the main event. And the co-main event, I had Benel DeRouche winning, and obviously that was not not what happened at all. Charles Oliveira showing that it is the Charles Oliveira era again. And, I mean, I think he is next. He just, he well deserves a fight against Islam Makachev for that for the championship. I was really pushing Benel DeRouche for him to have that um, championship. And then we'll see next with Charles Oliveira versus Islam if it happens soon. Hopefully it happens soon. And for me, if I had to, I think Charles would be ready, but Islam is a different monster. But Volkanovski showed that there is a game plan to beat this guy. I personally thought he had beat him, but, I mean, Charles Oliveira has that power. He showed showed that pretty much knocking out Benel DeRouche out cold. And, man, oh, man. It's just, I'm, it's a very entertaining fight. I'm ready. I'm ready to see what's going to happen next with Justin Gaethje and Dustin Poirier. Do they get... This is the loser of that um, fight, Benel. And, man, I'm just, I'm really rooting for, I was really rooting for Benel to win so he can have the championship fight because I feel like he doesn't get really the promotion and the push that he usually does. And then I think he took a fight too much. I think he didn't need to take this fight. But I think they pretty much forced his hand to, to show that he is a championship guy. He was on an eight-fight win streak. And, I mean, it is what it is at the end of the day. Hopefully he can push push for another you know, try to have for another push for the championship. Charles Oliveira is on market chef, hopefully in somewhere in Abu Dhabi or something like that. I'm very, very excited for that fight. And I think Charles could come up top, but you know, is on like as he tweeted out and said after the fight, there's levels to this game. And I'm I'm really hoping to see what is next for for Islam if they give him that. Or does he wait for Volk after Volk fights Yair and I, I think it's Oliveira, but I just want to see how much time they're going to give Oliveira. And hopefully, I hope they don't rush him and give him, like, like the Boston card. Hopefully, it was a 292, I believe, 291. I hope they don't push for that just to give Oliveira some time, especially how hard it is for him to cut weight. And then let's talk about the main event, which was, to me, was not a very entertaining fight. Um, I was... I knew Amanda Nunez was going to win, but for me, um, being um, Mexican descendant, I was very rooting for Irene Aldana to do, you know, just just for that, just to have the four champs, the four champs from Mexico. But I mean, at the back of my head, I was like, you can't, you can't go against, you know, the GOAT. And 
seeing this fight kind of just made me like, man, I really wish Juliana was able to fight. But, of course, with her injury, she wasn't able to fight. But, man, this fight was... I think it was the fourth round. I legit fell asleep the fourth round because it was just nothing. It was um, Amanda putting on the pressure, but Irene just not doing nothing. She didn't want to get caught. She didn't want it. It was easy for her to take taken down. Hoping, hopefully, she can learn from this and just know that I need to be more aggressive. I need to be more fear. I can't be. She looked like she was frozen the whole fight, and it was just, it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't a really good fight. For, but for Amanda, she did great in this fight, obviously, and. The GOAT has retired. And everyone's, you know, wondering, like, oh, you know, Juliana's saying that she's ducking her and she's afraid of her. Of course, having to beat her the first fight. And to me, I was real reactionary like that. Like, I I thought that Amanda was kind of ducking Juliana for that third fight. I wish we would have ended on that third fight with, you know, hopefully. I know Amanda didn't lose. So I think Amanda saw a world of her losing that third fight. But also... I want to say that Amanda is one of the most accomplished fighters in the UFC, especially in the women's division. Her pretty much making that whole division. And with that, you have that and her beating, you know, Valentina Shevchenko's, um, Ronda Rousey's, Juliana Pena's, just beating the who's who, Cyborg, everybody. You have her beating everybody. And she doesn't really have much to prove. She's just making more money and money off of this, which is great for her and her family, of course. And... It's just, I mean, what more? You want her to fight Juliana and beat her? It's like, oh, she just really showed that she can clear out the whole division. And I think this this is good for the NBA, for the, NBA, for, the for the UFC, because, there, I mean, there needs to be more push for these women fighters. I mean, you have Juliana Peña, who I think is going to end up being the champ next, probably call out Amanda, and, you know, that'd probably be a whole thing. But we need, we need more push for these women fighters, because I think we can see really great fights. I know this Irene fight doesn't really help her push for the rest of the division, but I can see her, if she gets on a little streak again, her fighting Juliana, or her fighting, like, uh, I can't really think of the whole division off the top of my head, or like a Vent- Valentina moving up, and Valentina holding three belts, that'd be, I mean, that'd be, that'd be something right there, and, um, man, I just, oh, man, I just really wish... She, I, w- I wish it would have ended up with a third fight, but it is what it is at the end of the day. And now let's get some, some NBA rumors. Of course, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves possibly trading away Carl Anthony Towns. And for me, my top spots, Knicks, Bulls, and I kind of been on the fence with this one, but I like, I kind of I kind of opened my mind to it in the Warriors. I know it's a little bit of a, a curveball there, but to have Draymond on the four, and you have to pay him, and that, that's that's the thing with them. It's just money, and how does the money work out? Of course, it'd be like Jordan Poole in that trade, and I mean, I don't know, maybe probably Jonathan Kaminga, just a lot of young guys for the Timberwolves, and I would love that for the Timberwolves to be with Anthony Edwards and build around him, and oh, man. And then Damian Lillard, of course, we talk about this pretty much every episode, but Damian Lillard, do they trade the third overall pick? Do they trade him? For me personally, if they have number three and Scoot Henderson is there, Trade Damian Lillard, please, Portland. Trade. I know he wants to be there, but I'm tired of the lives. I'm tired of the rumors. Trade him for your own sake. Because if you keep him, you're gonna waste your picks. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna be if you be if you get him, you draft Brandon Miller. If he's there, then you're gonna be what? You're gonna be the 15, 16 seed, and the Bulls get your pick next year, lottery protected. And then if you trade, you can trade and give him your pick. But I mean, it's it's real tough, especially with them being bad. They can, if they want to be good, the Bulls have the protection next year's pick with lottery protection, and if they blow it up, they get the pick. But if they trade it away, they trade Dame. If don't, if they keep Dame, they can give the Bulls that full pick, full right, and then they can have. Um, so they're able to trade two more picks, I believe, if they do that, and. Man, it's just it's just a big gamble to like throw away two more picks, and then, you know what? I can do this. I mean, it's not the best draft class next. I can t- I couldn't tell you. I think Matas. I have to really do research for this next. I've been focused on this draft class, but I mean, it's just something. You have three. You have. I think 
if you have to, you have Scoot Henderson, you build around Scoot Henderson, but another buck is shading sharp. That's one and two punch right there. You have your guards, and then after that, you go after your centers, and hopefully, like, you know, DeAndre Aiden and three-team trade or something like that. And then if you want, if you don't really see Anthony Simons as one of your guys for the future, as him getting older, you can trade him away for you for something for something. You know, he's a young player on a great contract, and I'm pretty sure a championship team or a team trying to make a push would love an Anthony Simons on their team. And for me, trade Dame. I'm team trade Dame. You know, I hope to see him succeed in other places. But it's just for the Portland Trailblazers, I think it's so much of a drag and too much, like too much. They're risking too much for the future, where I don't think it's going to buy out or pay off because. You have Yusuf Nurkic as your center, and all much respect to him. I don't think he's a championship level center. And then you have to be, you have Jeremy Grant, you're pretty much going to pay him a lot of money, and then that restricts you for everything else. You have like Matisse Thibel, free agency, uh, Cam Reddish, free agency, and it's just, it's a lot to ask for. And I think, I think the Portland Trouble is just to start the rebuild. And then, of course, we have Chris Paul and James Harden, possible trade right there. Suns, Suns 76ers. But I think Chris Paul just wants to know what he does so he knows the next steps, if he's going to be a free agent, if they're going to extend him on a, bring, on a shorter deal. And then James Harden, there's him with the Suns, there's him with um, – I'm pretty much – yeah, him with the Suns and him with Houston. And he's torn between going back to the 76ers and Houston. I hope he goes to Houston, but then we've also seen reports that Houston is going to pursue Kyrie Irving if um, – if, um, James Harden falls through, which I think, I think James Harden is pretty much a lock to go back to Houston, and that'll be that's all for today's video. Comment down below what do you think about Game Five, any UFC fights coming up, and what you think about Amanda retiring, and some NBA rumors that you guys have been wanting to talk about. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next time with more com with more content. Peace.